Okay, you can start. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome. Thank you to be here for the press conference of FIFA President Giovanni Infantino. Um, just some practical information for your interpretation channels. Channel one is English, channel two is Francais, channel three is Castellano, channel four is Deutsch. Uh, I will uh, leave uh, the floor for a few seconds to FIFA president and then feel free to ask questions for this press conference. Duration should be around 20 to 30 minutes. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much, Fabrice, and uh, also from my side, of course, a very, very warm welcome here in Zurich to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have you here and to have also to receive your, your questions. Um, the press release has already been yes. issued and, of course, the news, the main news of uh, the meeting of today uh, regarding the World Cup 2026 have also been um, communicated. Uh, let me just uh, stress that um, uh, I'm very pleased with the meeting. We had a very good meeting in a very good atmosphere. Um, yesterday we started already with uh, some working group meetings and then uh, followed by the awards of the best yesterday night, uh, which was, uh, I think, a very nice very nice ceremony. And today we worked uh, and we came finally as well to uh, the conclusion with regard to the decision on uh, the World Cup 2026, will, which will be played with 48 teams in a format which uh, comprises 16 groups of three, the top two qualify to a round of 32, and then 16, eight, four, and two. Um, the news or the good news in this respect are that um, this format can be played in exactly the same number of days as today, 32. That the team winning the tournament will play maximum seven games as today. That the tournament will take place in 12 stadiums as today. But on the upside, that 16 more countries, some of which probably would never have dreamt to participate in a World Cup, will have the chance to participate, and many more will have the chance to dream to participate in the World Cup. So from our side um, at the FIFA Council, certainly a positive decision when it comes to football development. It was a unanimous decision. And for this, I'm very grateful to uh, all the council members. There were then some other topics which were also dealt with in the, in the press release, but I would say we opened straight for uh, questions so I can answer the questions and uh, maybe add some points as and when needed. Okay, first question. Here. Anrich, der Deutsche Presseagentur. It's okay to ask in German or? Yeah. Herr Infantino, zwei Fragen. Ähm, die, ähm, die Idee mit dem Elfmeterschießen nach jedem Gruppenspiel, hat das äh, weiterhin Bestand? Ist das schon fix? Und wenn nein, wer wird diese Entscheidung wann treffen? Und die zweite Frage, es hat eine gute Stunde gedauert, dann waren relativ deutliche, kritische Worte von Joachim Löw, dem Weltmeistertrainer, von Oliver Bierhoff da und auch Reinhard Grindel, wahrscheinlich zukünftiges Councilmitglied, sieht die Entwicklung kritisch. Wie sehen Sie die Reaktion aus Deutschland und warum kommt eben aus Deutschland immer wieder zur Kritik an der WM mit 48 Mannschaften? Can you please answer in English? Because translation in German doesn't work. I have to translate? I, I answer in English. I answer in English. Okay. Uh, It's about criticism from Joachim Löw. Sorry. I can make the translation of the question whilst I answer. Sorry that I answer in English then. Um, with regard to uh, penalty kicks after the match and so on, this, is, this will be part of the competition regulations to be decided uh, um, a few years before the event. It's not nothing for now. Uh, these were some items which were just uh, put out to uh, uh, say that there are different models of deciding in case of equality of points, which will be the teams uh, progressing to the next stage. We have already now. Uh, rules which take care of this, uh, goal difference and other things. Obviously, if you have groups of four or groups of three, uh, in groups of three you have less matches, so you have my, maybe a, a higher chance of teams being at the quality of points and the quality of goals and so on. 
there, is, there are different ways. Uh, uh, for example, as well, the ranking, you could just say the ranking decides, and the ranking is something objective, is something which is decided before the beginning of the tournament, and this would then also uh, enhance the transparency. But these are topics which will be dealt with uh, closer to the tournament, a couple of years before when the tournament regulations are um, adopted. On the second question, why there are uh, why there is criticisms from from Germany? Well, you know, I, I, I think that even if we would organize a World Cup with two teams, one of the two teams would be Germany. Obviously, uh, the world champions, uh, top team, uh, who qualifies uh, regularly, who wins regularly. Um, it's obvious that for Germany, whatever format you have, Germany will be there. Um, but for many other countries, it is. Uh, indeed a chance to, uh, to qualify. It is a chance to participate in such a big event. It is one month every four years, and the one month gets, doesn't get longer. It stays in the same one month, in the same 32 days. Teams will play, 48 teams will play two matches, 32 teams like today will play three matches. So actually there is not a big change except for the format and except for giving the opportunity and the chance to many, many, many more teams in the world to uh, participate. It will not affect Germany as such, and maybe this is one of the reasons why there are some critical voices in, uh, in Germany. I hope that with time we can discuss and they can see the benefit for the world, uh, bearing in mind that uh, today in Germany as well, uh, there are many, many players playing in the German Bundesliga from all around the world, and it's nice for these players as well uh, to have the possibility to maybe participate once in their lifetime in, in, in a big event like a World Cup. Tariq? Do you have some water somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. Tariq. Tariq. Um, Tariq. Hi. Um, in between uh, this press conference and the announcement, the, it wasn't just Germany, it was the, the, the European Club Association put quite a, a strong statement. I don't know if you had a chance to see it because you had your meetings. But they said, you know, this is a, a, a political move. This isn't, um, hasn't been done for sound footballing reasons. Um, what's your message then? What do you have to do to sort of convince that, that these big European clubs, because they're a, they're a major part of world football at the moment, they employ a lot of these players who are going to participate from all over the world. Well, I think uh, um, there is, a, of course, a dialogue and a channel open with, uh, with the European Club Association since, since many years. I, mean, I know them since many years as well, uh, personally, very good. And uh, there are uh, some critical voices from some clubs. I prefer, to, uh, I prefer to focus on the positive ones because when you take a decision, obviously not everybody is happy with the decision. Some are critical, many are happy. We took a decision which was uh, uh, unanimous between the clubs, between the players, between the coaches. There are uh, a lot uh, who favor this, um, um, this decision. I was reading uh, Otmar Hitzfeld uh, yesterday who, who was very much in favor as well, but many more. Uh, I think that uh, when it comes to the clubs, and we have of course discussed this topic many times uh, or several times as well with the clubs, the main point was always let's not add on the calendar and let's not add on the burden to the players and we have achieved this. If you remember I have put um, um, an expansion of the World Cup in my manifesto and the proposal I had made at that time was and it's written that's why um, I, I, I'm quite comfortable to say it was 40 teams with eight groups of five and three additional match days and eight matches for the team that wins. Um, I've been voted on that, but we have come out with a format which actually is better because not only it reduces the number of match days compared to the proposal, it reduces the number of matches per team, but also it brings in more associations to the event, the football celebration, which takes place once every four years. Why we don't or we shouldn't allow countries to happen. We are in the 21st century and we have to shape the Football World Cup of the 21st century. It's not anymore the 20th century. 
it is the future. We have to look into that. Football is more than just Europe and South America. Football is global. And uh, again, one event in the same period, once every four years, which will help to develop football. I think this is, uh, uh, this is positive. The Council felt this is um, um, positive. And it will help the football development. Um, I mentioned this already in, in other press conferences. The football fever that you have in a country that qualifies for the World Cup is the biggest promotional tool for football that you can have. The most powerful promotional tool for football that you can have. From November when you qualify until June when the World Cup takes place, these nine months are extremely important for the development of football if you qualify for the World Cup. If you don't qualify for the World Cup, it's a disaster for many countries. Uh, the coach is sacked, uh, the association gets in trouble, uh, clubs have problems recruiting players, grassroots, and so on and so forth. But this football fever, this football promotion in many parts of the world, which today have no chance uh, to play, uh, is certainly something that uh, um, was on the top of our um, thoughts. We have a pool of three questions on the right. Four, four questions now, and then we play left. Señor Infantino, eh, buenas tardes. Martin Einstein de ESPN. Eh, le quería preguntar de qué manera se van a repartir estos nuevos cupos y cuál ha sido el criterio con el cual eh, han tomado la decisión de repartir los cupos en las diferentes confederaciones. Yes, the decision on the... Um, uh, repartition of the slots for the Confederation has not been taken uh, because uh, uh, it is not necessary to take this decision. We needed to take the decision on the format because we are preparing now uh, the documents for the bidding process for 2026. We have to make sure that the bidding process, and some forget that as well, that the bidding process for 2026 is absolutely bulletproof. Um, and uh, for this it is important to know how many teams are playing, what is the format going to look like in terms of the transportation um, of the teams, how many stadiums are needed and so on and so forth. So this is important to know so we can progress. How many teams from the different countries, this is not necessary for the process of um, uh, preparation of the bidding documents. Nevertheless, of course, this is an important topic and uh, we have decided that this will be looked at as well speedily to, to give some more certainty to all the, the confederations in this respect. Microphone, please, sir. Could you maybe tell us uh, what regions of the world uh, will uh, be able to promote their development with the new format? Yes, which will be taken into account when you have this, um, this discussion. Uh, Crucial is the, is the football development um, criteria, but the sporting side must also be uh, taken into account. So it will be certainly a mix between sporting and uh, um, development representation by uh, confederation. Uh, Africa, for example, has 54 members, one less than UEFA, and has five participants, whereby UEFA has 13 uh, participants. So these are certainly th things that need to be looked at, but at the end of the day, uh, each confederation will have more representatives in the World Cup than today. This is simply the laws of mathematics, which uh, are, uh, as you know, not an opinion, but are facts. Uh, Johnny, it's Martin Ziegler from The Times. Can, I, can I ask, what's, what's your personal view of having penalty shootouts in group matches? And uh, is this just a, a tactic to... Your personal view of penalty shootouts to decide group matches, and is this just a tactic to stop England getting through to the knockout rounds? <laughs> <laughs> no, already we go to 48 to get England as well. No, that's a joke. I please don't write it. No, no. no my uh, listen. My personal view is that uh, is that uh, I mean it's 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 interesting to to speak about to think about. Um, uh, it's interesting to have a certainty of 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 result. It's interesting to have something that determines the results on the pitch rather than uh, 
raising question marks about, hey, can they agree on a draw, or I don't know what, or I don't know what. Now, what this will be, I mean, the pitch of this is always a good solution, and penalty shoots out, shootouts are part of the pitch. Uh, but on the other side, as I was saying before, even if you say the ranking, for example, will determine, uh, then you, know, you have also a situation which is clear already before you play. So the teams that play, they know exactly that they have to win or they have to lose because there will be a ranking which will be uh, determined. So whatever helps is, um, is positive, uh, even though I think that with the, fo with the format of um, uh, the 16 groups of um, three and the top two passing and the winners of the groups will play against the runners-up of other groups, each match will be important because you will want to win your group in order to play in the round of 32 a potentially weaker uh, opponent. So every match is, is decisive. Sport News aus Deutschland. Hallo. Um, hallo, Herr Infantino. Zurück zur Kritik aus Sports News Germany. Mr. Infantino, I want to go back on this critique of Germany. It's been said that uh, things uh, today were done uh, um, over hastily. Why did you have to take this decision today, absolutely? Because there's still some time uh, until uh, we decide on the host of the World Cup 2026. Well, we are always criticized uh, by uh, Germany, uh, says the president. We can always be subject to criticism. We haven't uh, uh, done anything in a rush because this is a matter that uh, emerged from the Forum Committee as well, which met already in the summer 2015, which made a proposal as well, as you remember, to the Council uh, in uh, December, so well before my election as well, on, uh, on the increase of, um, uh, of the World Cup. So it's on the table for quite some time. An in-depth analysis has been made, discussions have been held. Not everyone can agree, but if you cannot take any decision just because, not, because you need everyone to agree on everything, then you will never take decisions. We think that uh, we have come w to a format which uh, brings benefits without negatives. And again, we are speaking about a competition which takes place once every four years. We are speaking about 16 matches in addition, but not per player in total. Every four years, it makes four matches a year. Um, I don't think it's this that will have an impact on the international match calendar. The international match calendar, by the way, which is a different topic, which is a topic that we have to discuss and we have to agree and we have to find solutions with the clubs, with the leagues, with the players, uh, because in general, we have to look at the health and at the number of matches and all of these things. But the impact of a competition takes place every four years is not impacting the calendar. On the calendar, we will look at it. We'll have to look at it uh, more generally. We have a stakeholder committee. Uh, the composition has been decided as well of this and of the other committees um, today at the Council. So now it can meet, it can convene, and then all these topics can be uh, debated there as well. And I always hope to have everyone on board Obviously, we always hope to have unanimous decisions on everything. This is not always possible, but with time, I hope we can get there. Thank you. Uh, Graham Dunbar from the Associated Press. The press release still talks about a deadline of May 2020 for a decision on the host. But, you know, South America seems to be focusing on 2030. There's nothing credible coming from Africa. If there are three potential bidders who all look like they're prepared to work together rather than against each other, could you accelerate the process just to get on? Does it need three and a half years? If, sorry, I didn't, I'm, I hear very bad here, I'm sorry. Can you accelerate the bidding process shorter than three and a half years if effectively you've got three uh, candidates who are prepared to work with each other and not against each other? Well, uh, what, is, what is crucial for FIFA, uh, obviously, and for the world of football, the World Cup being the, uh, the major event of FIFA with which um, the financing of all development programs is, is, is happening. Um, uh, the, the crucial thing for us is to make sure that all the criteria which we will now set up will be um, fulfilled and that there are sufficient 
um, bids and bidders to present uh, their candidature so that FIFA can take a decision which will protect the interests of uh, world football uh, since the competition is um, so important. Now, whether there are joint bids, this is also a decision which was taken to have possibility of joint bids uh, um, coming up, whether there are joint bids coming up uh, which would maybe facilitate or maybe not uh, the process, well then, this has to be looked at, but it's certainly premature to discuss about it uh, now. Alek Koshlev, TASS News Agency, Russia. Uh, there were a couple of questions in agenda about upcoming tournaments in Russia, Confed Cup, World Cup. Uh, could you give, please, uh, an update and uh, maybe you have any concerns? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Yes, uh, the, we had a, a long uh, update on uh, the World Cup and the Confederations Cup. Confederations Cup taking place this summer, World Cup next summer. In Russia, still with 32 teams, of course, and eight teams, the Confederations Cup. Um, work is going, uh, uh, is, is very much on uh, progress, on schedule when it comes to the stadiums. Uh, there are a couple of issues, but um, I have to say myself from having participated in the organization of major events in the past, uh, it's all pretty much online, which doesn't mean that uh, um, the Russian authorities and the LOC can just sit down and wait for the tournament to take place still quite the opposite. There is still a lot of work to be done and still deadlines to be uh, fixed um, in, in some stadiums. But the four stadiums for um, uh, the Confederations Cup, I mean, two of them are operational already since uh, uh, three years. The other two will be fixed very soon, including uh, St. Petersburg, of course. And uh, when it comes to the World Cup as well, everything is on track and uh, we have received the necessary guarantees that uh, the deadlines will be hit and that uh, uh, everything will be completed by the end of this year, 17, so that the test events can take place and, and the World Cup can uh, be organized in, uh, in Russia um, in a successful way. Monsieur le Président, bonjour. Eric Bernodeau, l'Agence France. Eric Bernodeau, a question in French, from France Press. Do you expect higher income from a World Cup with 48 instead of 32? This is said in a report that has been published about FIFA. On what can you base your opinion that you would have $600 million more if you have 48 countries, while in some countries the market will not be bigger? We the Council have asked the administration of FIFA to um, analyze the different proposals for the World Cup expansion. And when we speak about analyzing the different proposals, um, we speak about analyzing them from a sporting point of view, from an organizational point of view, from a cost point of view, from a revenue point of view, uh, from a football point of view quality point of view, balance point of view, so all, all of these elements have been included in this report. One element is uh, the financial element as well. It's very difficult, obviously, to predict what will happen in 10 years um, from now, even though contracts are signed uh, as well in advance for, for big competitions. But this has been done by uh, our marketing department together with uh, um, some uh, advice that they have been uh, taking based on the experience, based on the experience that was made by FIFA in the past, uh, looking at uh, the burden in terms of cost, looking at uh, the potential additional revenues that could be made with the additional matches. Let's not forget one thing, an additional knockout phase is part of this new format. And as I was saying before, every match will be decisive. Today, in the group stage, after the first three or four matches, you maybe start to get bored because you know already who's passing the group or whatever, or at least the first one is already decided and so on. So every match is decided, and uh, um, according to our marketing experts, this was the case. We have also one concrete example, which is the European Championship, which took place this summer or last summer in, uh, in France, uh, which where an expansion has taken place from 16 to 24 teams. 
one week more and uh, from six to seven games for the winner. Let's not forget that as well. And uh, there, of course, the figures are uh, as well available and they comfort us, I would say, in this, uh, in this estimation than it is estimations. And we hope the revenues will, will be much better. But the important thing is what is done with the revenues reinvest in football. Uh, Mr. Fantin, Jamie Rochade from Estado de São Paulo. You well know that the qualification tournament in South America is very important for the revenues of the federations in South America. Uh, if you have, let's say, six or seven countries qualifying for the new World Cup, uh, one possibility would be losing some of the interest for the qualification that lasts for two years. Do you think South America would have to change the way uh, it qualifies, basically, to the World Cup? And secondly, for transparency's sake, were any of the players yesterday that were here um, somehow benefited with a per diem or some kind of payment to be here at FIFA? Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, how the, um, uh, the South American um, Confederation will uh, organize their qualifiers in 2026, I don't know. We don't even know how many slots they, they will have by that time, so we will see um, what, uh, what the format can, can look like, if it's the same format as today or if it is a different one. It's up to Connebol uh, to, to make proposals. Uh, when it comes to the players who were here yesterday, the costs of travel were paid to them, and uh, they came with the cost of travel uh, having been paid, and uh, they had fun, and uh, you can ask all of them uh, if they enjoy now to be part of FIFA because not only they come here and uh, they play football, which was actually the idea of one of them to have that uh, football match yesterday morning, uh, but also they are part of the consultation that uh, we are making. And I think it is important that uh, um, we recognize the role and the important roles of the players generally when it comes to football matters. The, it shouldn't be up to the directors or the presidents to take leading roles, it's up to the players, and that's why we are involving them. Next question here. But only travel costs are paid, just to be very, very, very clear. Good afternoon, Mr. Infantino, uh, Lee Wellings of Al Jazeera here. Um, just about getting your name right there. I've got a question on the World Cup in the moment, but can I just ask for an urgent update on the Israeli clubs in the West Bank, whether any decision was made today what was discussed at the meeting? No, there was not yet a decision made today because uh, uh, we had an oral report by Mr. Tokyo Sequale who uh, um, gave us his update. Uh, he was tasked to have an, a final meeting with the two associations to see whether um, they can come together uh, with a football solution. It's not about politics, it's about football. And uh, within one month from now, uh, we expect the final report uh, to be produced by Tokyo Sequale, and then uh, we will take a decision. Okay, well, I was going to ask on uh, the World Cup in 2026, um, you could be reasonably argued that in expanding to 48 teams, there are going to be some weaker nations, even though it gives them a chance, or weaker teams, not nations. Um, are you worried about when we get to that stage and the quality of football, by then, Football's really going to have to compete harder than ever before to get the attention of new generations and television contracts and traditional television contracts that we've seen. I know you've already signed a big one in America. Um, are you concerned about the, the effect on quality with 32 seeing, seeming to be so perfect? Well, I, you know, we will see what the future brings us. Nobody can see in the future what, I, uh, what my opinion is, and I think the facts of the past show it, is that the overall quality of football is growing uh, tremendously. Um, I think in the, in the Premier League in England, there are 69 different nationalities of players playing. Uh, in the other leagues, it is big leagues, it is very, very similar. So we see that the quality already is increasing and is quite high uh, all over. Uh, I repeat it once again, I said it already several times. At the last World Cup, two powerhouses of football, Italy and England, were eliminated by Costa Rica which is a good team. It's not Argentina of Messi or Brazil of Neymar, it's Costa Rica. A good team that eliminated Italy 
and England at the last World Cup. So we see that the global level, the general level of football is increasing all over the world. So I think that the, the, the uh, uh, how shall I say it, uh, the uh, fact of saying already now as well that we are increasing the size of teams that can participate in the World Cup will increase the investments in football development to make sure that the teams can qualify. This is what happened in uh, UEFA for the European Championship, for which a decision was taken in 2008 for 2016 as well, to increase the number from uh, 16 to 24, which had the consequence of an investment into football development by many associations, and we have had some beautiful stories, uh, you know, the Iceland, uh, Wales, and so on of this world, Hungary, who came back in the, in the global scene. So I think this is, this is positive. Let me just say as well that a World Cup with 48 teams represents 23% of the member associations of FIFA. If we compare this with the Asian Cup, for example, where 52% are participating of the members of AFC in the Asian Cup, the Copa America is 100% of the members of CONMEBOL, the CAN, the African Cup of Nations, is 30% of the members of CAF, the Gold Cup is 34% in North and Central America and Caribbean. The Euro is 44% and the OFC Nations Cup is 73%. So we are still under a quarter of the members of FIFA which uh, participate in, uh, in the World Cup. So I think this shows also that the quality is certainly an argument we're looking at. But our objective is also to increase the overall quality of football. Uh, Paco, and then we have the three final questions. Two on the right, one on the left. If you are quick, maybe Etienne Moati from the keep will get a chance. Buenas tardes, señor presidente. I have a quick question, Mr. President. It's not a joke. This is totally serious. The president of the Spanish League, you know him, has gone a step further than Germany. He will sue FIFA for illegal competition to the national leagues. Uh, hi, Charlie. Charlie, so Daily Mail. Hi, Charlie. Um, were any guarantees made to any of the confederations about the slots? Bear in mind, obviously, you've got unanimous support for the extended World Cup, verbal or otherwise. No, no guarantees. No guarantees have been made. Um, the only, uh, the only, you know, sure thing is that obviously with 48 teams, everyone will have a bit more than what they have today. Everyone. Some a bit more, more and others a bit less more, but everyone will have a bit more. Al Harbi Khalid from Riyadh newspaper, Saudi Arabia. Uh, now we see qualified uh, World Cup uh, take two years from every team to qualify to World Cup. Now, after this change, uh, some teams will play two years and more than 15 matches to just to play two teams. Uh, two matches in the World Cup. You think it's opinion for uh, them? And the second question, we heard uh, some news. You will change the uh, system World Cup uh, club. Is that true or not? Thank you. You are hearing many things in Saudi Arabia. Um, on, the, um, um, on the Club World Cup, uh, this was not discussed today. This was discussed in one of the last meetings. We have said that um, we had the Club World Cup taking place in Japan in the month of December, squeezed in between the league matches and so on and so forth. It's not uh, the most satisfactory of our competition, so it's something that, of course, we are thinking, we are looking at, uh, we are analyzing, we are discussing, we are debating, and we will see if this brings us anywhere or if we stay as we are uh, or, or not. So. It's not something that was discussed um, uh, specifically today. On the World Cup, well, uh, uh, I think you should ask the questions to those team, to those 16 additional teams who before didn't qualify, who now qualify and have the chance to go to a World Cup and play two games in a group of three where the top two qualify for the next round. I think they will be very happy to go to the World Cup 
play two matches, and in football, it's the only sport in the world which is unpredictable and where everything can happen on the pitch. And this is why it is such a fantastic game. By the way, we are speaking here about football. Uh, let's not forget that. We are taking things sometimes a little bit over serious on everything, but we are speaking here about football, about enjoyment, about, I mean, we should come a little bit down to earth on these things as well. And I think anyone who could go to play a World Cup, uh, to play two games, uh, and then play his chances on the pitch, to play a third game, and then a knockout game, where everything can happen, I think this is a big, uh, a big benefit for football. Uh, Presidente. Perdón. Martín Fernández. Martín Fernández. On the plan that was presented, there are four matches per day for almost 20 days. Isn't that a bit too much? Also for TV, too much football in a short time for the people. And what do you think of the situation of Brazil? You said in the past that Brazil could be an example for the world once the situation in CBF and Brazil has evolved. Of course, there is still some work to be done, and I hope uh, uh, the work will be done. Uh, with regard to um, um, muchos partidos and, and yes, four matches per day. Well, four matches per day is something which already happens now for many days. It will just be a few days more, but it will be boom, 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 boom. You know, it will be uh, tough to start with. And uh, uh, then we move on to the knockout stage, which again interests the whole world. The, the, the group stage interests the whole world as well, in particular the relevant countries who are playing. And uh, for this reason, I think we can, uh, we can easily introduce it, also because we have already an example today of how this can work to have four matches in the same day. For Etienne. From L'Equipe, how is it possible, Gianni, if nothing has been decided, that the Europeans themselves speak about 16 slots in the new setup, and uh, every uh, confederation is uh, publishing figures? And what is the difference? And furthermore, the recovery days, the rest days in the first group phase, we would have teams with four rest days. Others have eight rest days between the matches. How about that? Uh, uh, of course, confederations are, um, they all have wish lists in terms of, uh, uh, of how many slots they would like to, um, they would like to have. And uh, there are discussions which will take place, which have taken place, which are going to take place. Uh, but nothing is decided in this, uh, in this respect, um, and it's a normal process. As to the rest days, um, obviously at the end of the day, um, if you have seven matches in 32 days for the team playing the final, the rest days will uh, figure out uh, the same as uh, it happens today. We'll have to look at the calendar, at the group composition, at the composition of uh, uh, the knockout stage afterwards to make sure that uh, uh, everything fits in in the right place. But for this, we have competition experts who are looking into these details. OK, this uh, concludes this uh, press conference. Thank you to all of you. Thank, Thank you, you for your much. patience. And happy new year. See you soon. Happy new year to all of you. Thank you very much. Bonne année.